Hello and welcome back. Once again, it is time for the comics coffee table. Oh. Oh well. I actually just filled the cup up and uh, bobbled the opening, and so I deleted it. <laughs> well, you, 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 uh, I could pour it back in there, but it would just take a lot of effort. How are you today? Welcome once again. It's time for the um, the comics coffee table. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha. How are you today? I am splendid. Thank you very much. Um, we're taking a break. We leave the real world over there. We pull up a chair to our very own comics coffee table, um, and we hang out and talk about comic books just for a few minutes every day. It's a pretty decent show. I am reboarding, rebagging, reboxing my entire collection. Along the way, I'm getting a, a handle on how to better grade my comic books and what they could be work, worth. It's, seriously, I'm going to be handling every single one of my comic books. Um, have you ever looked at your comic book collection and wondered just how much are all this is all this worth? Well, it could be worth, depending on a couple of factors, too. And then just comes, like, the like the knowledge of, like, if you go to cons, comic book conventions, and you go through the dollar bins, and you find some really good magazines there, in, in decent condition, too, and they're a dollar, uh, you know, and those get cheaper on Sunday, the closer you get to closing time as well. That's perspective. That's reality. <laughs> Tempered in with our love of these like superhero stories. And they don't have to be superhero stories to be comics and uh, or illustrated entertainment. Like what we consider comics. And the comics is a really broad definition. And when you mention comics, of course you're f maybe, depending on where you're from, the first place your mind goes in America, perhaps, would be the funny pages, the superheroes, to comic books. If you're in Japan, it would probably be to, you know, whatever your kid's reading or what you grew up reading and now your kid's reading. It could be the Shonen Jump or it could be a manga. It doesn't necessarily have to be superhero. You know, if you're from France, you know, it could be a, that could be a bande dessinée, a different kind of comic book in, in a European style. Like, you know, this tasteful Milo Manara book. It was very controversial because his female form and the subject matter of his story would be, you know, is in complete contradiction to what we consider victimization um, and, and violating consent. Yeah, it's adult content. But this is a like, but this is a, this is comics, in Europe, you know they're they're a little larger and they got a finer style to it. Yeah, this is this is actually a, you know, a really good issue. I mean, I this is a good story. Yeah, but I mean, look at this art. We should come back and talk about this someday. I grew up looking at these Milo Manara. French comic books that were either translated into English or not. I remember going to a French bookstore up in Quebec City, old Quebec City, when I was 15. It was a year at summer camp. It was, well, it was, it was, eight, it was 1988. I was 15 years old. And it was the last summer I was going to summer camp. Went for a month. It's a wonderful place called Chop Point up in Bath, Maine. And uh, we took a bus trip, and back then it was just you didn't need a passport to get over the border. It was quite commonplace. There's a busload of camp uh, of kids coming over the border, and there was arrangements. So we stayed at a college dormitory uh, overnight. It was like about a four five hour bus trip or so. But you know we went to yeah old Quebec City, and um, and it was it was great. Bunch of teenagers 
in this wonderful European style city. And it reminded me a lot of home, of Boston, which is another kind of natural, old, European style city. And, uh, but I went to a bookstore and I was just caught myself, you know, because I could, you know, in the erotic comics section. There was a lot of different smutty comics. Yeah, and Milo Monaro was the most definite. And it left, it was like, then I found the Milo, going to seeing other comics places in Boston, knowing which ones that had erotica. Like, oh, wow, they've got Milo Monaro as well. And did who is Milo Monaro? Let's just, yeah, we're just getting into it today. Yeah, fuck it. I love comics. You love comics. We're here for a reason. We really are. Hold on. I think, yeah. Okay. That's better. Milo Manara. Exactly. He's still alive. He's 77 years old. Morillo Manara, known professionally as Milo Manara or Milo Manara. He's, a, he's an Italiano. He's, he's, a, he's Italian. He's from Italy. He's an Italian comic book writer and artist. I'm reading this from, you guessed it, the wiki! After architecture and painting studies, he made his comics debut in 1969 drawing for Genius, a fumetti neri series of pocket books from publisher Furio Vanio in the wake of the popularity of Criminal and Satanique. You know, those were two kind of like uh, big... Uh, Big, you know, European comics, illustrated stuff. Yeah. So, hello. <laughs> I'm not going, I can't get into this entire thing, but his later work. And um, let's see. It was a lot of, t of his art ended up in Heavy Metal, the magazine we haven't talked about yet. It started in 1977. And um, yeah, oh yeah, my God. Hidden. Candid Camera, Hidden Camera, that was, you know, Butterscotch and Click and um, lots of stuff that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <I'm> sneezing. <laughs> oh, I, it's running again. <laughs> Not my nose, though. Thank goodness. Um, Manara's reputation for producing comics that revolve around elegant, beautiful women caught up in unlikely and fantastical erotic scenarios. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, just you can't find his stuff anywhere, though. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a necessary thing. There was an X and there's a 2009 um, X-Men comic. It's called X -Men, uh, The X-Women. Uh, by Chris Claremont. It was that's that's pretty pricey. Maybe I should get that. I'm a huge X Men fan. I'm a huge Milo Manara fan. I think it's time. It's time to find that issue. It really is. And we're let's get to it. We are reboxing, reboarding, and rebagging my entire collection. Yeah, I mean Milo Manara just. Well, I mean, just he might not be your cup of tea. I mean, just it was a diff different time it will it was and uh but beautiful form great pencil work beautiful ladies what can i say i need new bags i need new boards acid free boards i need new boxes because i'm i'm reboarding rebagging reboxing my whole collection i'm buying all my supplies at my local comic book shop and I'm um, yeah, spending my money there, not at the big box store and not at the um, online supply chain. I just who needs who needs our business, our local businesses. And I do you need supplies? You just might buy your supplies at your local comic book shop. They need your business and you should need supplies. But let's get to it. We've been reboxing, reboarding, rebagging my Green Lantern, my Green Lantern men. We need to have. We're doubling them up. And. 
What's at the end of the box? I'll show you. What's at the end of the box? This. Oh, wow. Uh, a huge bend. Leaves off at Green Lantern 54 in Brightest Day. And shortly after this comes a new issue number one. In. Let's look, well, let's look at the Indicia Colophone. And let's look at these dings. Ah, man. Look at that. I can press that, I guess. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, we got corner roll, and we got we got oh, Batman Arkham Asylum, now in 3D for your PS3 or Xbox 360. That was huge. That's a that's a form of Batman that I've avoided, to be honest. I am not really avoiding, but um, it was more of like I just. Here we go. Uh oh, we got Lobo. This has been great Doug Mankey art. Inked by Christian Alamy. But uh, let's see, where's our Indicia? Our Indicia says July of 2010. So this is come, we're coming right up to flat, well, Flashpoint, probably be around here too. And um, it doesn't appear we have uh, Wednesday Comics. We looked at a couple of we looked at an issue of that, but um, forgot there's a okay, brightest day green arrow. Yes, that's where the that's where it ends at 2010, and we begin in 2005. So this is about five years worth of five years worth of Wednesdays as I like to put it <laughs> let's be cute about it look this is an infinite crisis crossover I pulled this from you guessed it the DC the DC crisis long box me instead of just throwing them on the floor or even having a, a waste bucket next to me get on that put that on the list I just take one bag and I stuff it full of the old bags that's my bag <laughs> please don't hold my bag oh my goodness the cat's out of the bag on that pun oh, he doesn't he doesn't stop Man, he's so annoying, you know. But let's take a peek. Yeah, let's look at the let's. Look, ooh, Sim, Simone Bianchi. This is oh wow, the art in this is insane. And I don't mean that with any like you know disrespect for people with mental health issues. I've got my own. I'm very sensitive to that. Um, this is Green Lantern number six, December. January 2006 and it says on the cover here December of 2005 a discrepancy between the covering and the indicia I haven't come across that yet <laughs> oh wow I don't know <laughs> it's comic book stuff I've I've literally never seen that that's cute it must happen all the time I mean just never noticed it that's funny Ha 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 Wonderful cover by Ethan Van Skyver. It's great. Reintroducing, uh, ooh. We got the DVD release, or the Blu-ray release, of The Dark Knight. No, it's Batman Begins. Wow, okay. Simone Bianchi. Really nice pencil works. Great artist. Really good stuff. Let's look at that. Okay. Captain Hal Jordan was chosen to represent an intergalactic police force created by the oldest beings in existence, the guardians of the universe. 
protecting Earth and all space sector 2814 from every imaginable extraterrestrial threat imaginable. <laughs> Hal Jordan shines his light proudly as the Green Lantern. Okay. We have an Army Reserve ad on the back. Oxy pads with Dave Mira. That's awesome. There we go. You know, when you're riding your bike, you really need... We got Sergeant Rock, and this was done by Joe um, Joe Hubert. He returned to Sergeant Rock, something that he did like when I was a kid. The Batman begins. You don't have to be a billionaire spelunker, spelunker to afford one. That's right, he gets his hand off. I forgot about that. It's gruesome. Hard time. A guy with superpowers ends up behind bars. Um, yeah, it didn't fly, but I remember that. That was, uh, oh, was that an imprint? Or was that, that wasn't on Vertigo, was it? Let's see, Let's see these hooks. Just more. Oh, look! Star Wars Battlefront 2. The original Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, I played a bunch of Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017. And, um. More. Video games, video games, huh? And I hear that was like, I missed out on not playing that. That was like in a time in my life. I've. <laughs> Vegetarian Vampire Duck. That's great. Forgot about, I forgot about Count Duckula. And we have more video game ads. Ain't that great? Here we go. Oh, we got F's in the chat for Carlos Pacheco, please. And uh, it's a good way to start the game. It's a great way to start any comic book. I think so. Nice five sequential panels. Like what happened there? Boom. That looks hand drawn. Look at that. That's an onomatopoeia, a sound that spelled the way it sounds, a, a word that is spelled the way it sounds. So you, you know, boom. We've got some Mongol here. We got some Mongol problems. <clears throat> Welcome to Game Tap, where you can play over 300 of the greatest video games from the greatest systems, right from your broadband connected PC. It's gaming freedom like you've never, bef like never before. All for 14.95 a month. Get two weeks free. Bum, bum, bum. Anyone ever Game Tap? No, I never did. I'm not that much of a gamer. I love games, though. Oh, this is... Okay, great. Yeah, this is the Mercy Flower. The Black Mercy Flower. And, uh... Yeah, as we know from the... You know... The great Alan Moore Superman story. And this is uh, Mongol Jr. Who... Te and But his Mongol Sr. teamed up with... Um, Cyborg Superman... And eliminated Coast City, and you know we got a lot of like a oh look at this now this is great see that's a comic book panel that's a great I mean yeah oh yeah John Stewart thank goodness <clears throat> it's good to see you John Stewart especially because it's Juneteenth too I love John Stewart. John Stewart, he was, see, okay, see, Guy Gardner was like the the the, um, the backup choice for Hal Jordan when the the ring had to choose between two people, and it was so guys already had guys get this like long animosity with uh, with Hal over that, <laughs> but 
Jon Stewart. We're going to read this from, you guessed it, the Wiki. And um, Jon Stewart, one of the characters known as Green Lantern, is a superhero appearing in American comic books published by DC Comic Books and was the first African-American superhero to appear in DC Comics. And we're talking, and it's Juneteenth. We're talking, and uh, this is great. Yeah, really, there was no other African American superheroes before. Wow, really? And this, and he appeared, and the 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 Ballyhooed Denny O'Neill Neil Adams Green Lantern Volume Two, issue number eighty-seven, December nineteen seventy-one, January of nine. 1972 and about three more months after the release after the cover date of this um you know uh, the two cells that would make up uh, my my fetus will will join but <laughs> that's a way to look at it right the um john stewart's original design was based on actor Sidney poitier indeed the character is primarily voiced by phil lamar in the DC animated universe, he's John Stewart. Literally, is Green Lantern to a whole generation of kids because of the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoon, and you know, and, and, and good old Super Friends there back in the seventies. It was you know Hal Jordan. Also, John Stewart was the Green Lantern during the, the original Crisis on Infinite Earths. Because Hal was busy, you know, being being a bad Green Lantern and stripped of his power. And um, oh, so John Diggle in the the Arrowverse. His he was born. His name was Stuart. I never knew that. <laughs> that makes sense because hopefully they made him a Green Lantern in that show. I have no idea. I was n I am not an Arrowverse fan. If you have Arrowverse knowledge to share, I mean, I tried watching. Um, I watched I watched Flash for four seasons. Gosh, there's a lot of luggage in a CW show. If you don't care about all the correct things, or jeez. The actor who played Elongated Man got canceled for 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 a tweet he made, and just I mean, edge edge lord humor, you know, just that's like I don't know about that. Jeez, I mean, ooh, here we go. Cover by Simon Bianchi. This is great. Look at that, it's Batman. You see, they have it. They're a little antagonistic, aren't they? But we have interior art by Ethan Van Skyver. Good stuff. That's the second tattoo man. We've got more video games. Ooh, Batman Annual 25. That's on my spinner rack. I was buying a lot of DC Comics back then oh wow what happened here oh no oh I did not know about that oh that sucks that is a major ding oh that's something to cry about oh. but I was talking you know versions of teams you grew up with to a whole generation a whole generation of kids grew up with um with that Teen Titans as their Teen Titans. I could go to conventions and there are so many Starfires and Ravens. Like two girls. You brought your you know, your best friend with you and just like you wanna go to go to the convention. Start I, there are so many Starfires and Ravens hanging out together. And that totally respects the old Marv Wolfman George Perez Teen Titans I grew up with. And the relationship that Gar has with, um, that Gar Logan has with um, Victor Stone, Beast Boy, and oh, here comes something interesting. 
issue seven. Oh, here's issue eight. Issue nine. There you go. Okay. And <clears throat> we were talking about John Stewart, but uh, he got cut from the Jack Snyder's the Jack Snyder's uh, Justice League. But um, John Stewart debuted in Green Lantern Volume Two, Number Eighty Seven, when Neil Adams came up with the idea of a substitute Green Lantern. The decision to make the character African American descent resulted from a conversation between Adams and editor Julia Schwartz. And Adams recounts that we had given the racial makeup of the world's population, we ought to have a black Green Lantern. Not because we're liberals, just because it makes sense. The the character was introduced as DC's second superhero of African ancestry. Okay. And this isn't, you know. It doesn't say which who is first and who the other one is, who the other person is, other fictional person is, you know. <laughs> John Stewart has become a major recurring ca uh, character in Green, Lant uh, in Green Lantern mythos within the DC universe. He became the primary Green Lantern of Volume 2 from issues 182 through 200. Remember, he met his wife, that's his, him and his wife, Kat Matui, and the Green Lantern Corps. <clears throat> When Hal Jordan relinquished his place in the GLC from 1984 to 1986, he continued to star in the book when the title changed to Green Lantern Corps from 201 to 224, that's 86, through 1988, and would continue to make key appearances in Action Comics Weekly after the Green as GLC canceled in 1988. Yeah. Then there was Green Lantern Mosaic. That was that was a good Oh, there we go. That's half an hour. Yeah, huh? Has it been? Yeah, it has. Oh, wow. And the other, yeah, the other timer is about to go off in a minute. Green Lantern Mosaic was, that was John Stewart's, his own title. And um, that lasted 18 issues. I think I got about the first 12 or so. And uh, it was pretty weird. It was just, you know, it's just a, a patch. It was a world with a patchwork of different worlds. You know, like a neighborhood got abducted from each world. And so it's kind of like a, I hate to say like a zoo planet, but it's all of these different cultures are have to live next to each other. And occasionally, sometimes they war. And and then you have, you know, John Stewart there to keep the peace. Uh, and John Stewart was featured on one of the as one of the lead characters on the Justice League cartoon. Um, and that was, ran for ten, for ten, for a decade, yeah. And um, John Stewart is an architect, later retconned into a U.S. veteran and a sniper too, from Detroit, Michigan, who was selected by the Guardians as a backup Green Lantern. But uh, after the previous backup, Guy Gardner was seriously injured after getting hit by a car trying to save a civilian. Yeah, John Stewart. It's one what year later? We'll get into that tomorrow. You know, that that would be a good place to 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 start because that's a new chapter for DC Comics. This what what happened? What is one year later? We'll get into that tomorrow uh, <laughs> on Tank Top Tuesday. Um, but thank you so very much. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep these just a little shorter. I, I, I've been noticing it's just like I, I, I let the, the timer get away from me. And I don't think that's fair. I mean, just uh, to, to, to have just I don't want to like ramble, you know, it was kind of, you know, there's got to be a point to it. And the point is rebagging, reboarding, reboxing the entire collection and taking a break together, talking about comic books, looking at comic books, appreciating them. And yeah, I mean, and this is, you know, this is the box we got today and it's, it's Green Lantern. We're going to be doing Green Lantern for a little bit. And when it's done, it's done. And Green Lantern is one of my favorites. And uh, yeah, we can get, we're going to get all into it. The diff we're going to see all the different Lantern cores. We're going to talk about their different power rings. What's the difference between a power ring and a magic ring? Wasn't, didn't it start as a magic ring? Yes. <laughs> but 
But over time, the story just folds and changes, and new people tell new stories, and man, just, yeah, I mean, we were so, you know, just, we always, you know, there's room to respect the lore, um, but then there's just storytelling, too, and sometimes things contradict and overlap, and we we have to use our imaginations in this imaginary world in order to survive what's what it, imagination is like oxygen our, our oxygen nitrogen atmosphere here we have it on earth imagination is what we breathe in when when we inhabit these worlds and we when we enter these worlds and we need to we need to breathe that the uh, imagination is the pneuma the space so if things aren't don't quite fit use your imagination <laughs> make it up a little bit find find where they fit find where they don't fit and just accept it or even just discard it just be like oh well it, but don't let it ruin your day Thank you so very much for tuning in today. We've been talking about comic books. We're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. So tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern, when we find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. I would love to earn your subscription. We make daily content here. We talk about comic books every day, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. You can always find the live chat is jumping. And please continue this comic book shop style conversation in the comments we also talk about cooking spirituality and um join us yeah plenty of room for everyone my executive producer is a pokemon and he says what how many subscribers do we want gotta catch them all <laughs> have a good one good to see you see you later god bless namaste good luck and we will see you again tomorrow in those funny pages ciao bye bye